Hey, thanks for joining us. My name is Andrew Quinones. I'll be your host this evening, and we are in studio at uh, Positive Pomona Productions studio in downtown Pomona. And today we have guest uh, Paulette Young. Hi, Paulette. Hi, Andrew. Glad to be here. All right. Well, I'm glad to have you here uh, as, as our guest today. So uh, you and I have been hanging out uh, recently, and I've learned a little bit more about you and all the work that you've done uh, over the years uh, throughout our, our region. And uh, I even understand that you have a, a wonderful podcast related to health that goes out all around the world. Yes. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about your, your your business and what you do and, and, and how you got started. I, um, well, when I became a single mom, I wanted to be home, <laughs> but I have to make income. So because um, I wanted to be a part of my children's life, all parts of it. They have a game. They have a concert, whatever it is. I wanted to be there. So um, I said, I know what I can do. Start a traveling classroom. Because before I worked in the hospital as a respiratory care practitioner, emergency rooms, ICU, all the exciting things. If you want to be off work, they're not going to let you off. They're going to say, we all want to be off. But I want to go to their games and plays and be a part of their life. And so, long story short, my oldest is, was 13 at the time. And I saw what happened after homeschooling her for two years. I saw the disadvantage of working the nine to five and being away like that. Everyone else is raising my child. So the only way to go was, and then I had two more. I didn't want to do them the same way. I just didn't. I prayed about it. I talked to God about it. And then I made a commitment. <laughs> God, I'll never do another child like that again. Because it just, at that time, if you remember, everyone was into women's lib. They sold all of us, a lot of women, on the importance of, you know, um, doing what you want to do now can't do can't be done that way who's raising your kids the neighbors <laughs> the schools they need the parent too so starting um the traveling classroom and uh, it worked you know it really worked you can look at your calendar and say i work this 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 day oh i'm not available on that day i'm not available on the you know the days that my kids had, um, you know, they had plays and they were athletic and I wanted to be there. I treasure all those moments with my girls. And having a traveling classroom, if they were off school, I called it because I did a lot of um, CPR and first aid with the preschool. Um, and I did, and I developed a health and safety program too. It's not reapproved yet because I got to turn in paperwork because every two years you're supposed to turn in all this paperwork. So, but out of that came that health and safety program came. I became an author and writer. Didn't know I had those skills, but and that's that was fun too. So I enjoy motherhood. I wasn't a perfect mother, so we weren't, my kids would say that. <laughs> Is there a perfect mother? I don't think so. So you learn and you try to do better. Um, and that was me. I, I loved it. Um, I, through um, having a traveling classroom, through the writings, um, I also learned a lot about the HIV. The testing procedure was wrong. How do you get it changed? You can legislate, but that takes too long. So I chose to join the NAACP. So if it passed in their rim there, then the information on the importance of taking both tests so you don't have to go back and forth. Um, what I mean by that, you go three months, six months to a year testing for the virus. When they know they have a test, and it's called the RNA test, it tests for genetic material. Um, and if, you, if that one's positive, then you have the virus. The other one, well, it could be, may not be, hit and missing. The problem with that is 
you test someone and it says negative and they're, re- they're really positive. So they keep going. So you're going to keep infecting people. So I saw the importance of that. And uh, NACP National passed what I wrote in October 19, 2019. So they're included in their education on the HIV. I've, I've managed to go into Pomona um, High School and Gary High School to give the information. I'll never forget Gary High because one of the teachers there said, well, doing the, um, what do you call it, the kids that are a little slower or rowdy, as they call it, um, he didn't want me to do them. He says, oh, it's important that they go to the um, computer class. And I thought, is he, I want to say, is he crazy? So I, I didn't say that, but I, I did convince them. I said, let me have them anyway for at least 10, 15 minutes, at least. So <laughs> let me get this straight. Uh, you were going to some of the Pomona high schools to teach um, a lesson in, in, in CPR, is it? or No. Uh, <laughs> this is what my, I knew what my goal was, to tell them um, the importance of going to college. So and, you, were, you and, went uh, to the uh, high schools to share with them a, a, Career readiness uh, career speech. Career readiness through what I've gone through. From what you've gone through. Yeah. However, uh, a select select amount of students, uh, they didn't want you to work with because they were perhaps the rowdy ones. Yes. Or the, oh, that's interesting. But but you refused. I refused. Wonderful. Because just the ones that are going to sit still, they, I don't care how rowdy someone is. If someone if, if uh, someone's talking about something that affects your life, your rowdy bunch will listen. Mm-hmm. You have to care. See, I don't, well, I know there's supposed to be the rowdy bunch, but I look at every student, every adult as um, Einstein. You have to prove to me that you're less than, but you start off at a high level. Yes. They listen. They yeah. were glad. Absolutely. You know, I think we have some things in common in the sense where, one, you were talking about, you know, how important it is to, to raise children, for mm-hmm. families to raise children. Not the government, not the schools, not the yeah. neighbors. And and I'm also, uh, I'm a late parent. I, I started mm-hmm. being a parent at 40. Mm-hmm. I got two small children. And uh, my wife and I, we both run nonprofits. And we felt it was very important to be uh, an actively involved part of their lives. So mm-hmm. we're, we're homeschooling uh, our, our boys. And uh, fortunately, you know, God God bless, we have the, the freedom mm-hmm. and the luxury to, to do that. Yes. And to teach our children. Because they belong to us. They don't belong to right. the government or the school That's, or the world. And you, you will be the role model. You will um, um, see to it that what they need, not always what they want, what they really need, yeah. that's going to hold their lives up for, you know, for ages to come. I homeschooled also, just the oldest, because I felt the school system had failed her. She was in private for a long time. Then she went to... Um, well, they had changed the age level for um, junior high. That year was a total disaster. I was fed up. So what I did is I'll do it myself. Mm. But I was with 40 other families. Ah, yes. Yeah, when I did Power the numbers, huh? Yeah. Power numbers. Because at that time, Calvary Chapel, when Raul Reese was in West Covina, mm-hmm. there was a lady named Millie. She started um, homeschool, and she had 40 people signed up. Yes. She said, Paulette, if you're going to do that, just sign up with us. Bro, wonderful. So it was Calvary, what was it called? Calvary Chapel Academy. Yes. We also belonged to a, a legal group. All you had to pay is $100 a year. So if there's any legal things, you know, with the system coming against you, they fight for you. That's right. So that was a total blessing. So yes, yes. So, so yeah, and I, and I think I think that part of you that, that, mm-hmm. that took it within your own uh, power and your, your yeah. own hands— uh, to to be the primary source of, of, of love and education to your children. You have to, and I, I would tell anyone, look at your kids' grade. Um, how would you grade the papers? Because Tamil would come home, A plus. I put D. And I said, look at all these misspelled words. Plus, it, when you know your child, you know what they're capable of. Mm-hmm. This child was already reading two of the three grade levels ahead. And she mm-hmm. can't. You know, no one really cared at that time or whoever had her. And it was a substitute teacher that spoke to me 
at the school and said, and if you say I if you say I said this, I'm going to deny it. But I'm telling you, she doesn't belong here. She's very bright. Yeah. And I says, and the principal at that time got upset with me. Well, we don't just grade on um, on mistakes like spelling and grammar and stuff like that. I said, too bad. The colleges they do. Because I was a science major, I have a BA in biology and a mi- minor in bio. Go- go- I'm a um, bioorganic chemistry, and I'll never forget getting a paper back. All these red marks. I was infuriated. You better believe it. that didn't happen again. Yeah. Well, and they tell you we'll mark down when, when we have papers and things that have to be submitted. We'll, yes. we'll mark them down. And now, yeah, now yeah. we we have a spell check and all those mm-hmm. other things that yeah. allow us to make the mistakes without even yeah uh, learning. Right? From them, huh? Yeah, that is, yeah, that's <laughs> not good. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so. Um, you um, you know, I grew up also around this area, and mm-hmm. I was a a bright kid. I was a gate student, uh, but I was one of those troubled youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and one thing that I, I I've learned is that I, I've always I appreciated adults mm-hmm. uh, like you uh, that saw beyond. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe the the the, the, the mission of them yeah. and and, and yeah. dedicated still you know what mm-hmm. time and energy to helping mentor and inspire uh, young people. And I found out my oldest most likely required smaller a smaller classroom because I put her in at Calvary Baptist in Laverne. They were so homey, family, and that's what I needed as a single mom. I needed that. They were their parents when. Um, I wasn't there. Yeah. And I felt safe. I felt comfortable. I felt I didn't need to worry about my kids. And so, especially the oldest, she was not the easiest. <laughs> All right, Paulette. Well, yeah. uh, we're going to take a, a short a short station break, and we'll be right back. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to the Pomona's Promise Network podcast. I am your host, Andrew Quinones of the Southern California Service Corps. And today's special guest is Paulette Young of healthcare consultants, teaching others to save lives for over 20 years. Okay, welcome back to the Positive Pomona Production Studio and Pomona Promise Network Podcast. Uh, my name is Andrew Quinones and I'm your host. And today we have in studio our special guest, Paulette Young. Well, Paulette, uh, you and I are Optimist members together in this club here, Pomona. Yes. And that's how I met you. Yes. And uh, a little bit that I learned about you is that, again, you have a, a health consulting business. Yes. And um, one of the things that that uh, I kind of we, we kind of worked on, I guess, a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, there was an event at the Fairplex called Unity Day LA, and you had a booth uh, with a, a young lady, um, and it was all set up to teach people about CPR and about saving lives. Yes. Um, I, I see you brought in a flyer with you today. Uh, why don't you share a little bit about your, your health consulting business and, and uh, the information uh, for sudden cardiac arrest? Yes. Um, right now, there's an organization called HOPE, and they wanted us to learn to, not learn, just go out and begin to do compression only CPR. The rationale behind that was because 80% of the heart attacks occur at home. And then you have another 60% say that you're out in a mall or something is witness, but yet there's less than 10% survival rate. The football player that had that um, massive heart attack or his heart stopped, if no one did compression only CPR or did nothing, then he would have been dead. Thank God they also had the what they call an automatic external defibrillator, which is um, used also when the heart stops. And he needed that defibrillator. Without the defibrillator, he wouldn't have made it still. And the reason for that is sometimes the heart stops and it, it requires to be shopped. Um, off the record, <laughs> I'm not telling anyone not to have a defibrillator, but what did they do when there was no invention of the defibrillator? They did what they call a precardial thump, and they hit hard. There's someone I taught the class to. I says, this isn't um, 
practice. It's not supposed to be. But he did have a um, kid that I think he was 17, and they were playing football. His heart stopped. It was a Christian school, and the kids went praying. And then the coach noticed the kid turned blue. It was still blue. He remembers what I said about that because the paramedics wouldn't have been there for almost 30 minutes, so he wouldn't have survived. He did that. In his case, it worked. Mm. That kid is still alive to this day. Wow. So it showed over and over again the importance of having that automatic sternal defibrillator. But the reason um, for the, I took an interest in doing compression only is because they're dying. Less than 10% survival rate, and all you have to do is, you don't want to put your mouth on them. Um, do compression only so you can keep the blood circulating because there's still some oxygen there. And, and a, lot, a lot of times the paramedics come within 10 um within the first five to 10 minutes, 15 at the latest. So if you can keep that blood circulating, um, you spare their brains from being brain dead and stuff like that, at least you'll try. And anybody can do compression only CPR, anybody. And, and today on this podcast, we're gonna, we're gonna set up this uh, mannequin uh, shortly, and we will do a little videotaping on how to actually practice compressionless uh, CPR. Yes. All right. Especially you're out, and um, there's no one. Paramedics aren't there. Right. Um, but once they get there, let them take over. <laughs> so, you know, um, Paulette, one of the things that uh, we're doing within the, the Pomona Promise Network, we, we have a little subgroup called Prepare Pomona. And it's about community safety. And um, some of the things that we talked about is disaster readiness, mm -hmm. disaster preparedness. Uh, I've been to a number of meetings over the, the, the course of the past decade uh, with, with police and fire and, and county officials and, and talking about disaster plans. And one of the things that, that was always been a takeaway is that they're not coming to help you uh, in a time of disaster. Uh, they're not going to come help me. Uh, they're going to responds to the most important calls first uh, before they're going to get to my house, let's just say. Uh, so one of the most important things uh, during a disaster is preparedness. And I think one of the best skills that, that we can learn for ourselves is, is whether it be how to do a, a proper tourniquet, how to do the compressionless CPR, how to, how to do these things to, to save lives and keep our families healthy mm -hmm. and with us. And so I, I got a question for you. Uh, what inspired you to particularly go down the field of, 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 of health and wellness? I'm, I'm passionate um, about helping people, one. And then when I learned that some of the youth are dying when they could have been saved, I want to get that information out. Just like for the HIV. Right now, it's not, you don't see it on TV you don't see it anywhere where those numbers are. But the fact is, 50% of all new cases are below age 25. That's high. Mm. It didn't used to be that high, but it is now. And um, these youth are getting ready to go to college, and then they learn they're HIV positive. So um, I just always, well, at one time I was planning to go to medical school. That's not me in the health stuff. And I, after I got my BA, I didn't, I went back into the field of respiratory therapy so I can stay connected to the health area. I'm just passionate in, the, in that area. There's so many things, if a person knew, they would be still alive. That's why I love health fairs. Yes. Those are so valuable. One of my friends, if it wasn't for the health fair, she'd be dead right now. So let's say out of the last five years, uh, or even maybe a decade, because, you know, COVID and the pandemic really had an effect on us doing things. Uh, how many health fairs do you think you've, you've uh, attended over the, the past decade? Wow. I was with Diamond Love Foundation. That's the one with Sugar Shane and Sister Serena had started. Mm -hmm. And um, we did health fairs. In fact, we, it was big. Uh -huh. um, we had anybody from Casa Kalima to... 
um, Pomona Valley to we had just about everything. The mm-hmm. dentist, Western University, all of them came out. They checked the eyes. They this um, how many? I don't really know. I, <laughs> Quite if, a few, if, I'm guessing. Yes, because if someone asks, "Hey, Paula, you want to be part of the health fair?" and then even um, Pomona Unified School District when they had theirs, I was part of that. I have so much fun imparting um, information to the youth, especially the youth. And I'll never forget the two guys. If I had a camera and I could have taped them, that would have been so valuable. When I told them about HIV and how you get it, I said, you can even get it through kissing if you have mouth sores and you bit your lip and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And is a a girl going to tell you that, you know, that she's HIV positive? No. Is she going to say that my mouth is kind of messed up? No. Are you going to have a microscope to look at it? <laughs> what is your mouth like? I remember the one kid, he was spitting on the ground. He says, I've had a girl every month, a different one, and I'm always kissing. <laughs> he changed his mouth. I mean, changed his mind about <laughs> putting his mouth in someone else's mouth. I said, um, the United States was the last one to even say anything about the kissing part because you do have to have a condition. The problem with the condition, who's going to tell you? Right. They're not going to talk at that level. And they definitely don't have a microscope. Mm-hmm. I said, it's before you get involved, you need to be tested. Mm-hmm. She needs to be tested. I remember there was one case, the young man, he never, ever got involved sexually, kissing, no kind of way. And he was down to the last, uh, what he's going to do next. He was planning to get married. He didn't get married. The girl tested positive. She only had one encounter. Wow. And she had no signs and symptoms because you literally may not show any signs and symptoms for up to 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Yes. That means you're not being treated. And when that happens, how long are you going to live? Because there's been no treatment. Yeah. Well, if you're Michael uh, or or, uh, Magic Johnson, Mm -hmm. you know, or some of these wealthy people. Mm Mm-hmm. I guess you're going to have more success living than others, huh? Oh, definitely, because you can fly out of the country. Yeah. You can just about go anywhere. But even with on the note with HIV, we've come a long ways. Um, they do have the thing where they said if your viral load is um, low, you can't transfer the virus. The only thing I have a problem with is that's if the person— that has HIV is taking their medicines. What if they choose not to? Mm-hmm. Now the viral load goes up. Now it can transfer. Mm-hmm. So it's called honesty. In the beginning of birth control pills, I thought about that one. I says, the girl can say she took the pills. Did she? <laughs> a lot. Some of them didn't. Mm-hmm. And she ended up pregnant. The spouse or whoever they were um, didn't expect that. It's called honesty. Honesty. You got to be one hundred percent honesty. So if you're not, you if you have a partner, and they're not honest, I say shame on you, because yeah. that's what it's based on. It's working, but I guess nothing's foolproof. Yeah, people aren't. So why do we think <laughs> that's yes. going to be? So, but it. Um, I don't know where the numbers are since they started that. The only thing, the biggest thing I don't like about it is the person that has to take the other medicine so that um, they don't get it. Um, well, it's, it's a problem because the medicine can destroy, like, the liver, the kidney, and stuff. So you have a good liver, good kidney, good organs, and you take this medicine to keep from getting the virus, yet it's got the, the, the other effect. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about that or worry oh, about Oh, yeah. That, that, that's just, a whole other conversation yeah. in this, this pharmaceutical uh, health care system that is <laughs> mm-hmm. quite corrupt in my, uh, in my, my purview. Yeah. Well, I, we I look at what that. the other countries are doing, and they follow the United States. They look at what we do. Mm-hmm. So when we come up with something new, a new vaccine, new anything, they're not quick, except for the COVID. Everybody was quick to take vaccines for that one. Not me. Other. <laughs> well, you hear all the problems you. that are happening now? Yeah. That's uh, right. that, well, the death rate has gone down. Mm-hmm. 
Um, people are, you know, I forgot to bring my mask. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, people are, you know, doing much better. Well, so. it, I think I think these past couple of years have been uh, confusing to mm -hmm. very many people all around the world on all these mandates and, and uh, uh, these people coming out saying things that are profiting uh, in the long run from it, like Fauci and some of those other other mm -hmm. people that are again it's it's a profit driven healthcare system, and uh, man, I, I just tell you uh, for for me at least, I think the best uh, policy is is prevention mm -hmm. uh, to have a healthy immune system to eat mm -hmm. well to to have a positive mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, I think God yes. provided us with all that we need uh, within our bodies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, and we to do overcome things. To fight. To, yeah, and what, we do things in some of the medicine. Right, I, I think corrupts the body and the immune system. That's right, and I think it's a shame. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute shame to, to think that perhaps the future of the world, as it unfolds, uh, that we will all be tied to some pharmaceutical company taking uh, vaccines and, and booster shots for the rest of our lives. You know, it's 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 uh, not me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, until it's, unless it's, they can give me a clinical reason, right? And then I'm always told by the doctor, if it's not broke, why fix it? If it's not broke, why I fix have it. it. Right. And the news doesn't say anything about that COVID vaccine because if you have a strong immune system right. and you have high allergic reactions, Center of Disease Control put it on their website. Do not take right. the vaccine. Yeah, It's not for you. Yeah, I have a strong, strong immune system. Mm -hmm. I don't get colds. I can be around people with colds and Still, it's not transferring to my body. Right. My immune system is very strong. Yeah. So I asked him, um, why would I need a vaccine? Right. So, and, you know, you have to go and be tested. And you really have to come up with your own reason why by looking up everything you're allergic to and seeing if anything yes. matches that vaccine. Because if it does, don't take it. Right. And, and, you know, just for transparency sake, you know, uh, I, I believe that um, everyone has their own right and their own opinion mm -hmm. to do what uh, they need to do with their own body and their health. And mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't shame anybody that did take mm -hmm. the vaccine. I mean, that's that's their choice, you know, but, but also on the same other hand that I don't think I should be shamed if I didn't. Let's just say yes, uh, we all have a responsibility mm -hmm. uh, to take care of ourselves and our families the best yes. way we know how with the best right. information that we have. And um well, besides besides all that craziness that's been happening over the world for the last few years, you know, um, getting back to why we're here today, mm -hmm. and and that is really to to share uh, your experience uh, here in Pomona and and uh, within our community and, and helping uh, mm -hmm. by sharing just really good information that's able to save lives yes. uh, and to help people uh, to grow in better ways. Uh, is there any other uh, things, any 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 stories uh, that you might want to share that just kind of stand out? Uh, over the years that that uh, made a difference in, in your life uh, because of the work that you do? Yes. Um, being able to be the traveling classroom and having a profound effect on those that I teach has been great. I know this isn't a Christian show, but i got to share this. Please do. There was one lady. Um, uh, she still stands out in my mind. Her mom prayed for her for years and years. She wanted her to... Um, be up under Jesus Christ. And what happened in the end, all those seeds were planted. Her mom wanted her to become a believer in God, period. And what happened was her mom um, died. So here Paulette comes. <laughs> I, I share me. I don't tell other people what to do. I just share myself. And... Um, she listened. I said, now we need to go ahead and start the class. I'll never forget as I go back to my car at the end. She pounds on my van window because I had a van at that time. <laughs> it kind of scared me. So I turn around, and um, she says, this God you talk about, my mom talked about him too. How, how do I receive that God as my Lord and Savior? So we we prayed the center of prayer. And she knew she had other people to talk to that can help guide her. And I'll never forget that day because I couldn't find her house. 
I almost gave up. And I, we, as Christian, call it spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. I want to say it was in its highest. That's, that sticks out. Mm. The other thing that um, stick out, my ability when I was doing the health and safety program for that 16-year period, the state let me talk about the HIV. Uh-huh. And then the last round, <laughs> they said, take this out, take that out. I says, Wow. Because you, you won't have enough room for the information on the HIV. And if I scare someone, good. If it scares you into doing something the right way, that's good. But um, those, those are a couple of things that really stand out. The change I see in a youth, um, especially when I was at Pomona High, they listen. They wanted to know, well, if I get tested now, would I have to worry later? I, t- I tell them no. It's good to be tested. Mm-hmm. The playing field has changed. Um, you shouldn't be involved that way. I, I don't tell them how to put a condom over a banana. <laughs> I think that's so funny. Give them the facts. Tell them what can happen to them. Mm-hmm. If you're going to get involved... I don't talk about the do's and don'ts because we all know it doesn't work. Give them the facts Mm -hmm. that works. Because I can say I had a profound effect on that audience. And I chose to stay at the school the whole day. Because the teacher asked me, well, how long, how many hours can you stay? I said, how many classes you have? And when do school ends? I said, I'll be here the whole time. I've already blocked off the day. And what she did, she invited all the other classes for that period instead of do the students, send them down to the room. There was 100 seats sitting there. <laughs> and I'm thinking, in one classroom? No, she told the other teachers, instead of having class today, because we don't know when we'll get this lady again. Yes. And she's doing it for free. Yeah, because money shouldn't stop. Education. That's right, huh? <laughs> That's what I feel. It should not. Um, there's too many of us. Yeah, we all need money, but we all need to keep our kids alive, too, mm-hmm. until you can figure out the money later. <laughs> yes. But in the beginning, you just, somebody's got to do it. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm that person. So you're going to, some of you are going to need compression only CPR. Give me a call. All right. <laughs> Send me an email. And on that note, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to have a demonstration of the compression-less CPR. Yes. Did I say that right? Compression-less CPR? Yeah. Oh, no, compression only. Okay, compression only CPR. So when yes. we return, uh, we're going to get the studio set up and uh, we're going to show you what compression CPR yeah. is all about. And hopefully, if you learn something with us, you may one day have the opportunity to save a life uh, in your neighborhood or family or community. Huh? Yes. All right. So we'll be back in just a minute. Hey, thanks again for joining us at the Pomona's Promise Network podcast. Today's special guest is Paulette Young with Healthcare Consultants, teaching us compression CPR in order to save a life close to us. We hope you enjoyed today's podcast, and we hope you learned something new. Want to learn more? Feel free to visit us at www.pomonaspromise.net. Okay, welcome back to the Positive Pomona Production Studio. My name is Andrew Quinones, and I'm your host for today. And we have special guest, Paulette Young, and she's going to show us an example of compression CPR. Hi, I'm Paulette Young with Healthcare Consultants. We do a lot of training in CPR, first aid, bloodborne pathogens, HIV. Um, We do quite a bit. Um, What I want to say is I'm going to show you compression only CPR, how you would um, do it so that we can save, possibly save a bunch of lives and get that less than 10% survival rate to go higher because at least you know how to do compression-only CPR before even the paramedics get there. That would help. So this is normally done, the way I'm doing it is done on children and adults and teenagers. Okay, let's go. So the first thing you're going to do is find the person's nipples 
and your hand is gonna, the heel of your hand is gonna go on this bone, that hard bone that's in, on your chest there. And you take the heel, and it should go up like this, right in the center of the chest. Fingers up like that, and then you interlock them. And the song you do is, um, Fun Bee Gees, Stay in the Lock. <laughs> Okay, let's do it again. I'll just stop for a moment. But you can continue to do it until you're tired. Okay, that's it. And if you want me to show you one-on-one -on -one or in person, You'll call Healthcare Consultants, 909-670-6999. And we'll have some fun with it. You want your whole family? We'll come out. We'll even do some, what we call Zoom training. Whatever it takes, that's what we're going to do, because we're about saving lives. In fact, we're going to save all the lives in Pomona. <laughs> all right, all right. Why not? Okay, welcome back to the Positive Pomona Production Studio. My name is Andrew Quinones. I'm your host for today. And uh, we are just uh, coming to a close of our podcast interview with Paulette Young. Uh, today, we got to learn a little bit about her, uh, her raising her children, a little bit of background of her professional experience and, and her community work. Uh, Paulette, I just really want to thank you so much for, for joining me today here at our studio. And uh, would you like to share any, any thoughts or, or, or parting words with our community? Um. It's, it's been a pleasure. I love sharing and talking, especially when it comes to saving lives, our children's lives, our parents' lives, our friends' lives. Um, the blog talk radio that I have, American Health Crisis, I normally come on right now once a month, and I normally talk about things that no one talks about. So just to inform people. I've had classmates call me when I've talked about the kidney and Someone wanted to know the numbers. What does that mean? <laughs> I have to be honest. Tell them they can look it up, and this is what this means. You have to make changes. All of us do. If you're not going to make changes, then, well, it depends on what you want your quality of life to be. Mm -hmm. If you want it better, then you have to make changes. And change is not always easy, but it's important that you do. So, um you can always call me. You need a class. I do teach classes where you get a certificate and things like that. And the bloodborne pathogen, which is a much needed class. Um, the pediatric first aid CPR AED that has approval. The one that I run has approval, approval of the Emergency Medical Service Authority of California. It's a worthwhile class. It's a long class, but that's what it's going to take to save the little one's lives. And when you begin to um, um, take classes, you never know. It, it may be your own life that you've shared with your family, and they may know what to do. And I want to go back on that question you asked, something that stuck out. I remember one time, this um, little he was between first and, first and second grade, and my friend Cynthia invited me to come down to talk to her class. I, in the beginning, I had an attitude because they're too little. What are they going to learn? That was my attitude. One of the little boys learned how to unchoke your loved ones because I had them bring baby dolls. and I brought balloons in. We bust the balloons and then put them in a straw. Then you try to blow the balloon up and it wouldn't blow up. So to show them the importance of um, keeping the airway clear. And... He went home. Within two weeks, he remembered what I taught him. He saved his uncle's life because he didn't have muscle dexterity to do the um, choking, to unchoke someone. But he coached his um, brother that was a little bit older, like 12, how to unchoke the loved one. 
saved a life, changed my attitude about what kids can do <laughs> and what they can learn. He learned enough to save his uncle's life. All right. That well, still sticks out. <laughs> well, Paulette, that is a wonderful note to uh, end our, our podcast on. And, and again, thank you for, for all the good work that you've done over the years in our community. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate you and keep it up. And we look forward to having you back mm -hmm. and, uh, and sharing more with us in the future. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Okay, so again, thanks for joining us uh, here at the Pomona Promise Network podcast at the Positive Pomona Production Studio and here in downtown Pomona Arts Colony. Again, my name is Andrew Quinones, and I'm your host. Uh, and this has been a part of the Community Safety Prepare Pomona series. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. It really does a lot to help us out to get the good uh, news out to the wider community. So uh, we, we appreciate any support that you give us. Uh, and, and keep on sharing this good news with others. And hopefully we'll see you within our community. Peace.